13 mitigator Ford Fusion. I'd like to thank you for listening to Let's Talk Racing.tv. Speedway, thanks for listening to Let's Talk Racing. I'm Teddy Peter, driver of number 17 Toyota in our NASCAR Camp World Truck Series, and you're listening to Let's Talk Racing. <laughs>
Mm. So you, do you have a plan or a plan or, or a thing that you hope by the time? How old are you? A timetable, so to speak. 16. 16. Hopefully so. by the time I'm 18 we'll be racing stock cars and I'm hoping sooner or later making it into trucks or nationwide at least. NASCAR's all-time goal, but that's that's sure. Lot. Sure, it it is it is. Well, you got to have a goal. Mm -hmm. um, then who what kind of who's your sponsors on the car? Right now we have got Cox Rails and Brass Monkey. They just signed the other week. What was Brass Monkey? It's a local restaurant in Chesterfield, um, right next to a Chili's. And so, are you gonna have food over in your area come Saturday? I don't or? know. I'm not sure about that. I'm just like, well, I don't need to know if I need to move my car or something. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> but I know if we're at if whoever's at the races we'll have cars to hand out and if you get there on time and you get the car you can go there and it's something special for it. Oh really? They that's pretty cool. What it is yet, but oh, they'll have something. That's pretty cool though. Yeah. What type of food they offer? Everything, pretty sports much. Grill. Sports, huh? sports grill. So. Cool. Other than seafood, I think. I don't think they do seafood. Wings. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Wings galore. Yeah. We love food. <laughs> yeah, if Al, if Al was here, he'd be talking food with you on that. <laughs> All right, so um, so your dad and your friend back here works on a race car. Yep. Um, these are your sponsors. I, I'm I put notes up here for you. I, I put notes on the screen there for you in case you wanted questions. Oh, there. Just, all right. Well, who's your, who's your favorite driver? My favorite driver is... We know who it used to be. We yeah, about it used to be Tony Stewart when I was a little. But right now, it's been a few years now. It's been Jimmy Johnson, of course. Um, every year, my dad and I, we pick somebody new to root for. Oh, okay. Yeah, this year we went for Case Kane. Didn't work out well. <laughs> but I think next year we're going to try Denny Hamlin. See how he does. Hopefully yeah, he didn't have a good year either. No, he didn't. But I think his back's hurting more than he, than he wants yeah. to admit. A little bit. Definitely was at first. He's coming back strong. Yeah, well, hopefully. Uh, hopefully, that's pretty good. Um, what's your most embarrassing moment? You can admit it. I'm trying to think. I'm guessing. That head first through the wall. Yeah, there's been a few times in arena racing where it's just a stupid move. Just go straight into a wall. And, oh, <laughs> you know, it was one of those panic moments. You didn't know where to go, so you just went straight. Is that right? And that I got, what was it? I got an award this year. It's called the Wall Award. Oh, did you get the Wall Award? Yeah, I hit, yeah, I I hit the Wall the most head on. Uh, uh, I, 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 have, I have some friends. I didn't friends. see it, but yeah. Ricky brought it to me the other week. It was pretty cool. Now, now, I will tell you this. Somebody else that drives a number 11 car has won that award as well from Langley. Really? And you know who number 11 is, right? Your favorite driver? Did he have yeah. Did he have yeah. he, he, Him and Paul Lubno crashed together one night and took and smashed in a wall, and they both got to share the wall award for that year. <laughs> That's cool. So every time I take him up to Richmond and we go see Denny, and it drives his PR guy crazy because the two of them start talking and he can't get Denny on track. <laughs> <laughs> It's not something to brag about, though. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's, it's oh, something funny. different, though. So, yeah. well, not everybody gets it, right? Exactly. You can say that. Yeah, a lot different this year. Yeah. And do you have anybody that you don't like racing with so far? Not in arena cars, no. No. Mm -mm. That's a surprise. Who do, who do you feel most comfortable racing around when you're racing? I don't really feel comfortable around anybody in arena cars. <laughs> in that case, we just put all of them in the crap. Yeah. Right. I mean, if you're next to somebody, you're on your toes. It's it's sketchy. I'll give you that much. So how did you do uh, this past weekend? We did decent. I mean, did we better than I did. Yeah, we made top dog. I think we finished seventh, and top dog just caught the wall perfectly on the outside and the tire popped. So that was that. So yeah. how how did you do this past weekend? Man, the racetrack is tough, uh, and I'm sure Tyler will yeah. contest to it. The, the the I think it's the new tires that we're running. Honestly, I think they just need to take and, and scrape the whole racetrack Bad off and reason. start over. Yeah. Because the the outside groove is just as fast as the inside, and you can yeah. I don't care how fast you are, faster than the person you're in front of, that you're behind. You cannot get by. Right. You can get to their door, but you just can't get off the corner no. to to get in front of them. So, so what happens if you start in the back? You're just in a big gaggle. You can't go anywhere. No, there's not a chance. I mean, I, I sit there and I was running over top of everybody in front of me. They were two wide, three wide. Yeah, that's... and and you can't go anywhere. 
and you wait for hopefully a restart comes so you can take the cone and, and bypass a few yeah, and, no and you just uh, I, I was running like ninth or ninth or tenth and, and you just can't go anywhere yeah. and then I ended up slipping up on the wall and, and broke the right front just I was just riding I just got too high because if you if you get your left sides out of that black you, there's no grub. No, there's not. It's, um, it's but it's really laid some rubber down on the outside lane there, and that's where people are getting some some grip up there. So, so how just, how is the Scott and Scott story going? Well, so far it's it's nothing until we get <laughs> close to one another. But right now there there there's not much to. He didn't talk. He didn't even look at me this weekend. <laughs> so I I don't know. I guess he's still a little upset. I guess you had to have been around the last last was it last week or was it the week before we had? Well, it was been, last week. Last the week, week before. We had, you know, when I went over on my lid, Scott yeah. hit me, and, and he was on a show, so we had a little some words. So he blamed me, and I blamed him. So. Yeah. Racing is racing. It is, but, you know, I, I think there's got to be some give and take, and it's different when somebody gets into you and then they just drive through mm -hmm. you. I mean, it, I, I don't have a problem fessing up if I've done something. I, as a matter of fact, the guy that's running the other 17 car this year, last year, the last race, I mean, they actually come over the radio and told us to get away from each other because we were like <laughs> running. And, and he was just in the middle of the racetrack. I couldn't get under him, or he'd run yeah. down in the middle of the straightaways. I'd go to the outside, and he would cut that lane off. And and after the race, I went over there. Well, I got beside him one time, and it, and it snatched the wheel out of my hand, and actually running down into the middle of the guardrail. So I went over afterwards, and I said, "Hey, look, you know, I didn't mean to do that." And he's like, well, there was one time in the middle of the corner you spun me around. I said, I did that on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, you know, you got to give me some room. So, you know, I mean, as long as you fess up to it and say, I don't, I don't have a problem with it. And you're certainly going to get into each other. Yeah, I mean, it's, that's, it's, that's a given. That's going to happen. It's uh, part of racing. Uh, so, yeah. But arena is fun. I, no. I totally enjoy arena racing. Um, it's, it's fast and there's always action. And it's, most of the time, there's, it's real racing, too. It is the the only thing that the that gets me is like when you, you when you're in the B main you got that's, a bunch of that's a different story. So, you know you get some rookies or guys that haven't raced a while they're new at racing mm -hmm. all together and you don't really and it, it took me a while to learn where the the middle of the racetrack is to yeah. where when you run under somebody where's the line that you give the guy on the outside or vice versa and uh, yeah, it's just a little know. it's a little scary sometimes going by those guys. So. <laughs> so do you Spies like beef or pork? Uh, we'll go with pork. 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 Yeah. pork. I don't know what. Well, I'm not a beef and a pork guy. I'm yeah. not a chicken guy. My wife likes to fix chicken all the time because it's more healthy. All of the above works with me. Yeah. Food's food. Right. Now, are you a Ford, Chevy, or Toyota? I don't even more know Chevy. Thing. What's on your car? Is it a Chevy? I, I'm putting Chevy stickers on it, but well, I'm getting stuff with a Ford truck, so it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> what else you got over there? Oh, fishing or tanning at the beach? Yeah, I'm gonna go fishing fish. tanning. No, I'm tanning. Yeah. I don't see tanning. This no, probably thing. not. I'm going to go with fishing. That's go fishing. definitely top one. Are you, are you a He's 16 and he doesn't want to be on the beach with the girls. What is... All right, with this. tanning at the beach, that's a little different. <laughs> but being at the beach with the girls, that's, no, this, that's this a different story. Fishing or beach tan, not tanning at the beach. Mm. All right, um, mm. I'll give you that one. That's, that's the beach, easily. So I, I asked him earlier about whether fishing or tanning at the beach, but this I decided to flip-flop it and make it a beach tan. <laughs> this doesn't tan. take much to get me confused. <laughs> yeah, that's why he's into the wall <laughs> upside down. You know, all yeah, exactly. Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I haven't finished like the last few top dogs. Man, it's been rough. Those things, they, they go at it in top dog. They don't hey, there's a lot of payback goes on in top uh -huh. dog. You make and people even you wonder why they... No I points. used to get... Well, that's the thing, you know, and I used to get a whole lot of people on Facebook that were like, why don't you run the top dog? Because I used to just push out, ride a lap, and sometimes I wouldn't even make a lap because all you got to do is push out to get your point. And I'd just push out and leave because it wasn't worth... Terrible. Well, one, we don't have the sponsorship to run tires and you know I figured if I didn't run it I could run more races on my yeah. tires. Um, you guys buying tires every week? Yeah, mainly. Yeah, I run the same set for a long time. I run it for half the season mostly. Most really? of the time. Mm -hmm. Cool. Learn something? Yeah. I mean the guys that run up front generally buy two tires every week but I, I haven't. We, don't, we, didn't, we only did it once. We didn't do it the first, second week. We had yeah, tires. We, yeah, two tires every once in a while. We'll go ahead and do a quick wrap up, do a shout out to your sponsors. 
we'll get back to some more stuff here after we get done with the other stuff. <laughs> well, I got to thank Brass Monkey for helping out with us and Cox Rails for sticking in with us this whole year. <laughs> da, 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 da. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're going to go ahead and I'll give a shout here to Matt McCall. By the way, Eric McClure's birthday is today. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. How old is he? 29 and holding, probably. You know he's got five girls, right? No, I didn't know he had that many. I knew he's got a few. I thought he had, well, no, I thought he had three. Oh, you know, I think it's pretty much what he told me. I have to look in the text to find it out. Let me get Matt on the line here. Yeah, there's just some people are saying that they have audio but no video. Yeah. Audio of another video? Yeah, I'm going to call it right now on the website. They can hear, but they can't see. stuff to talk about for another 30 minutes. <laughs> Not a lot. Not a lot. What are you talking about? One thing you're talking about is the running the UAS next year. Oh yeah, for go-karts. We'll be running the, uh, I and mean, we'll be running nationals in Yamaha, hopefully, and be moving it to the UAS group. What is that? It's the open motors, pretty much, I what you run. Unlimited all-stars. Yeah. Some things are called. <laughs> yeah, 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 there's anywhere from... 100 cc's all the way up to 250 cc. Uh, yeah. I had a friend of mine, he used to work over at Richmond International, and we were talking uh, last week, he was in town, that his, uh, uh, where did he, he ran Pocono on go-karts, he ran somewhere else, and he said they were doing like 140 down the straightaway before they got in the corner. Oh my man, on a go-kart? His, yeah. his grandpa ran, uh, he got clocked at Charlotte with dual motors back then. Oh yeah, yeah. 176 miles an hour Charlotte. Man, I can't imagine being on a go kart. That, that was fun. Wow. I don't know, man. High off the I don't know how fun it was. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Back like, then, those cars weren't like today, man. No, they, they didn't no. have bodies on them and stuff. Yeah, were I tell you, uh, Styron's his dad, the old man there. Mm -hmm. He raced go karts back in the day with dual motors and stuff. You, you, you get him going talking about those. It's pretty, it's pretty fun. He's got a lot of stories. Listen to stories about short track racing. They grab each other's bars and stuff when they're running by each other, trying to pull them back. <laughs> Crazy stuff. Like, really? Yeah, because that's, that's going to be exciting for him. That's a move up in, in class to be able to run. Yeah, I, I would imagine. Yeah. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. the Yamahas are a lot faster than standard Briggs to begin with, but those are, yeah. yeah, that's a big step up. It's going to be fun for him. Now, is that like a, a, a traveling series, or do you just race certain racetracks? They run, uh, Virginia has a series, and then they also have a national point system where you can qualify for the three big races at the end of the year. Where's the three big races at? Two of them are in Tennessee, and one of them's in Georgia. Okay. Yeah. So, but you got to qualify. You got to have enough points locally to qualify to get in because they have so many people trying. Mm. So. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, that'd be fun. Where, where locally? It's uh, the, wherever the Virginia dirt circuit runs, they usually run on that circuit as a, a tag on to the standard circuit. I got you. They, they know they're separate; they're their own thing. Mm -hmm. And so, but they run. So they run. That's when. And then they also run um, four or five races other times throughout the year. We just have to schedule that. Yeah, that sounds like pretty, pretty fun. Anytime you can run 140 on a go kart and turn left. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> Good luck to you, there, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you got to have wings on. I mean, basically, you build the wing wedge bodies because you need the okay. side force. If not, they just want to spin out and get in. I would imagine. Yeah. Video's going out. Tell them, um, uh, give you a different email. This is the, if they go to Facebook on the event, they can direct link straight to the thing using Internet Explorer. Oh, that might be, they may have some wrong. Yeah, it's not Internet Explorer. Like Chrome doesn't work for a lot of things. A couple of people said they're getting it just fine, and a couple of people said they have audio. Um, I don't know video. what the deal is with him. Yeah, you, you know, yeah, if you're on Chrome, you sometimes you'll get audio and um, video. Okay. Huh? They said on one. 
last weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was pretty cool to come out for your yeah. first race and, and win. Yeah. He just kind of was riding, and all of a sudden he was in front. <laughs> well, yeah, he got he got lucky there. I guess the, the spindle come, that. bolt come out in um, Weedy's car. Yeah. And locked it right in front of. It has to be on a PC. It won't work on a smartphone. Um, so, yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he kind of lucked up and just had to ride, but he was still. His but he got faster. Pretty fast. Yeah, yeah, he got faster as the race went. I saw yeah. it. They were real free. Yeah. He got a little corner thing, which just always just. Well, he's out. a dirt. <laughs> he's a dirt racer, so he's used to that. But uh, it was exciting. It was fun to watch him mm -hmm. win. I mean, they were literally still putting the car together. Really? I don't Ooh. even know if he got hardly any practice. Really? Yeah. We've had that trouble two weeks in a row not yeah, making practice. We had a right front piece come apart. And, and of course, when something comes apart, it bends everything one and one. Oh, yeah. So I had to rebuild right before qualifying. Yeah. yeah. One of them we didn't even make qualifying. No. That's the oh, way he ran so well, though. Two, a couple weeks ago, he started yeah. back, finished third in the B main, and then finished fourth in the top dog that week. So it worked out pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> well you I just don't need no practice. Yeah, I didn't have that many complaints. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I would just soon have the call right than, than worry about a practice. <laughs> and especially if you're getting pretty close, you kind of know what yeah, to go Matt, back to. You're not going to be so or far or off. The, the threads on the bottom A frame. Phone number seven five seven seven two seven nine two six. Oh, yeah, it was old, it's that older car we bought, and never changed the bottom of the A frame and just, just ripped it out. Mm -hmm. I don't know about these race car drivers. I think they hit their heads too many times. <laughs> so really? let's talk about some news while we're. Uh, we're hey, rock and roll! You like the you like yeah, the, left, the right. fire department doing their thing on Jeremy Mayfield? Oh yeah, yeah. We heard that you know Jeremy Mayfield that the, the fire department's gonna burn his house down. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's, he must still own the land, but just hasn't paid for the house. Yeah. No, I think they foreclosed on all of it, and then because uh, uh, I know they tried to stay in the house. I know it was a while back they had done something to plead to, to stay there for a little while because there was another house, or either they were staying in something next to the house or something along those lines. So, I don't know, yeah, but I think they just finally gave up and said, "Hey, I mean, it's it was going to happen eventually. You're not going to stop it." Um, but I guess he was in the middle of building it and. Uh, I just heard on the on the radio on the way here. They weren't finished building it, and of course he lost his ride, and so the construction stopped. But I guess they had they had testing at Charlotte today. But I haven't seen any lap times who was fastest. But I said I seen that they had some little 30 lap race. Well, it was kind of like a makeshift race just to see what the cars did mm -hmm. um, and how they handled throughout the thing. Did you hear about the electric F1 team now? Mm -mm. I saw on Facebook they're building one at the moment. I don't know when the uh, first time they'll be out is, but a full electric car. Yeah, hmm. it's kind of weird, but interesting. Getting it to yeah. last that long, it'd be pretty. Yeah, because you talk about electric car, I mean, they got torque like right now, mm -hmm. like instant. Kick butt. <laughs> you definitely get off the corner. There ain't no yeah. doubt about that. Yeah, they'll have an electric car series probably soon. Yeah, before too long, we we'll got <laughs> it. I mean. Do you do you do any eye racing at all? No, but I've heard about it recently. I want to. It'd be cool to do. I haven't been on there or anything, but well, yeah, I'm too poor. Y'all get up with me when he decides to do that, because we got to deal with eye racing. Yeah, cool. And I can get him three months for free. It's racing. Let's talk racing. Virtual racing. Yeah. Yeah, it's like hey, the, about hey, as real as it they, gets. They even had someone that got <laughs> a, a, you know, a chance for a ride based off winning the yeah. high racing circuit. Yeah. Did yeah. 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 well, yeah. you, you see that dude? He threw up in his helmet yeah. his first time. <laughs> first round. He's always wrestling well, line, never raced for real. Yeah, the dude was like right, super on fast in high racing. Like I mean, he's right. like ranked one or two in the world. And, and I forget where he was from, uh, overseas somewhere. somewhere. All right, Matt's on the line if you want to remember how to do it. Push the line that's blinking, then push speaker. Let's talk racing. Matt McCall, how you doing today? Uh, pretty good, man. How you doing? I can't complain. I got Scott Allen, Roger Brim, and we got Tyler Daniels here, an expiring arena car driver. So give us a little bit of background about yourself and how you got started and uh, what you're doing today. Um, okay. Well, let's go back many years, man. Um, you ain't I, that uh, old. I started racing go-karts. Um, did that for a decent amount of time, 8 or 9 years. Um, then uh, got into the street stock racing. And then... Um, my dad made the bad mistake of saying, hey, if you can win a race, we'll get a late model. <laughs> oh, that's all. I, I wish my dad would have said yeah, that. Yeah, really. <laughs> well, I, 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 I
we'll regret that to, to, to today when we're not racing much anymore. How long did it take you to win that race? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I wish I had that money, actually. <laughs> <laughs> now, but how, when he told you that, how long did it take you to win your first race? Oh, uh, let's see. What would it have been? Uh, we probably ran five or six races. It wasn't very many. <laughs> <laughs> got pretty lucky uh -huh. there. Um, yeah, so uh, that that happened really quick, and actually we ended up just finishing that year out in street stock, and then got a late bottle to uh, start racing the following year at Hickory. Um, but that went fairly good. I mean, at first we were uh, learning on our own, got a little help from some bigger name people in uh, NASCAR racing, Harold Holly and Andy Peacher started helping me a little bit as far as just advice, motor stuff, a little bit of everything, and uh, that led to, you know, win a decent amount of races, win a track championship, uh, got some relationships from different sponsors and stuff, and that put me in, having a chance to uh, form a relationship with Roush when they first did that going show, um, and then that put me in position to basically get a chance to race some nationwide stuff for Bush at the time, and uh, Arthur races at Yates, uh, and that was still... And believe it or not, you could get a ride and not have to bring money. So um, that uh, obviously dwindled down pretty quick because of that same atmosphere. You know what I mean? It's all yeah. about sponsorship and finding a dollar. And I never was very good about boasting about myself. I'd rather just go out and win the race and bring a trophy home and go do it again next week. And it, once you get to that level, it's, it's more about the show than it is necessarily all. you got to have the results, but you still got to build them and play the game. I, I wasn't very proficient at it at that time. Um, so, yeah. that for a little bit and then went back to that uh, I guess in all that meantime, I was doing some UARA stuff too. I won championship the first time running that and then we did it again in 2009 with actually two different car owners uh, and won that championship that year also. And that, that sort of, I guess that was 2009. 2008, 2009, I started also my shot business and setting cars up and stuff uh, to try to make somewhat of a living without eating ramen noodles every single night, you know. Um, <laughs> and that just uh, pretty much got to a point where I was like, okay, I'm working a ton of hours and racing less and less. I'm like, well, maybe I should try the real job stuff. So, uh, so back, I guess, that's when I graduated high school. I went to college and got my engineering degree, and that sort of put me where I'm at now. I went to Richard your children, she got an engineering job uh, on Joey Coker's truck team. I actually with Harold, so I had a relationship there. Boils down to, I've had some decent relationships with a lot of good people, um, and that's always been able to open the doors to the next position I've done. And this day and time, now I'm actually a race engineer on a 31 Cup car. So, uh, and I still have to race a little bit, so I fight that uh, urge off every once in a while, but definitely not enough. <laughs> so how did uh, Charlotte go today for you guys? Uh, it actually went really well. Um, it's, uh, it's uh, all the stuff that they worked on trying to get different air configurations and a little different engine stuff. And I, I don't know, I got to tell them, like, my opinion is they want the race better than get 35 really good drivers and not 10 good drivers and 15 okay drivers. You know, I mean, it's not taking away from any of them, but there's not 35 Jimmy Johnsons out there. You know, so I mean, if you had 35 of those, the race would probably be pretty good. <laughs> yeah, he definitely does make it look easy. Yeah. Yes, I mean, obviously I think it's a team deal, but I mean, he's, for some reason, he's able to excel to another level that most people can't reach. And I think that's, it's a little like that, you know, but if you're on that team or if that's the guy you pull for, then you think it's awesome. Yeah. Right, right, right. Um, but I mean, for us today, we're pretty good. I mean, uh, today was the uh, second time we've been on a test with Newman and having a new driver, and that's a little bit different approach. Uh, so just sort of actually just learning every every piece a little bit differently, you know, as far as what he wants and what the, you know, with all the rules and stuff, it's a little bit uh, open-ended box we sort of are in right now as far as the rules. So mm -hmm. once they get them closed in, they'll be able to work a little harder on what direction you go in. But today was more or less a free-for-all, try to unload good and go out there and swing you out there in some races, you know. So but it, went, it went pretty good for our first deal out together. Now, do you think it's uh, will be easier working with somebody like Ryan that has an engineering background, or is it easier somebody that doesn't really know know as much? Because you know sometimes information can be a bad thing. Yes, I think it's definitely a double-edged sword. Like I think it's good to be able to communicate with different technical words or the way that people are thinking. Um, 
but also just knowing from a driver's standpoint that sometimes you have preconceived notions of what's going to happen before you actually give it a chance. And I think that sometimes is not good for making adjustments to a race car. You know, I mean, if you're working on it, you know from your simulation or from other track tests or something else that's backing up this data that your stuff you're wanting to try, but your driver thinks it will not work, then, you know, it puts you in a spot. Well, if they don't think it's better, it's probably not going to be better. You know, so right. uh, I think it, it can be good and bad. I mean, I feel like a little bit that I've been able to work with him, though, I mean, I think it's, it's going to be good. Um, it's uh, it's going to be fun, for sure. That's good. I, I hope you guys have a lot of success. Uh, I think Ryan's a good guy. He definitely wheel a car. Yeah. Do you, uh, now, how many late model races are you still running? Because I know you ran, the, what, the turkey race here a couple weeks ago? Yes, I did. I ran uh, Kenley Thanksgiving weekend, the weekend before that I ran Myrtle Beach, and the other, let's see, I ran South Boston on our first off weekend, and then I ran Hickory on our next off weekend, and then I ran that uh, truck race at Bristol. Uh, Ricky Benton gave me a chance to do that, and then the other two races were obviously after the season. So it'll probably be really similar um, next year as far as what races I can run. I don't know, I think it's funny how when the season starts winding down, you think you can't wait for it to be over, but just the first weekend that it's over, you're you like, want to go back ready. to the racetrack, you know? Yeah. Let's go find another race to go race, yeah. come on. <laughs> like, we don't race enough. Yeah, I'm one of the few idiots, I think, to keep signing up. Actually, this past weekend, um, I was talking to my wife, and I know it was actually the first weekend of the season, and I Probably pay to do it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> yeah. Oh god. Hey, that's that's. We usually try to have an AIK race, charity race during December. Usually, haven't heard from uh, Savages yet. Uh, is it in January? I, I think uh, I'm not December sure. December or January. I have to look it up. Maybe we'll get him to come out and have some fun with us. <laughs> so where where did you get your uh, engineering degree? Uh, UNC Charlotte. Okay. Yeah, I knew the whole time that I was racing at Hickory for uh, and like all stock stuff. So I commuted back and forth, and I was fortunate enough that my parents could supply me enough cash flow to be able to drive back and forth, eat, go to school, and just race. You know, so it wasn't that bad of a gig to build them. No, I would so, have took that gig. And race. So, yeah, it uh, wasn't bad at all. I've been definitely fortunate on that side. So, how long have you been over at Richard Childress? Uh, this will be starting my fourth year. Your fourth year? Mm -hmm. Um, do you know, um, Jerry Haley? Jerry Haley. Engine shop. Should be in charge by now. Oh, he's in the engine shop? Yeah. I, mean, I, I know some of those guys, but I don't know a ton of, especially if they don't go to the track. That's um, and the guys I have more hey. relationship with, there's about four or five guys you work out with. I'll put you on hold for a second. We'll finish up that. I don't know if I'll stop the head name wise. Now, did you uh, did you race with Mike Dillon back when he was running late model? No, I did not. I mean, I knew uh, I knew of him, but no, I was still racing go karts and stuff around that. You time. still just know of him? <laughs> I'd imagine it's got to be kind of funny with Mike around. Oh, uh, it's comical for sure. He's never gonna. <laughs> Uh, you're going to get a laugh on either if it's your expense or somebody else's. Right, right, yeah. That's be funny. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I will say that, you know, I mean, when we used to run at Wilkesboro back in the day, late models. Mike was the guy to beat the last few the, few years there. Yeah, I, I, I definitely uh, had only got the bit in and he picked up from where he was pretty damn competitive. So mm -hmm. it's funny though now to see, actually, I think it was at Watkins Glen, I believe. I can't remember exactly. But. Something had happened for the race and uh, this past year. And somebody, one of those cars ran it back and somebody on that road. And Richard came on the radio and was like, Do y'all know Mike did that? I guess Dylan did it somewhere. <laughs> before the race started, he ran over somebody on pit road looking down. I don't know if he was putting the gloves on or checking something, but it's just hilarious how much crap they give him about wrecking such like stuff. <laughs> I don't think many people give Mike a, a break. They always give him a hard time. Yeah, he gives it back, so I think he's got to take a little bit, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, Matt, we got to go ahead and get rolling here. We're going to have to get you on a bigger spot and give you more time next time. No problem. 
Matt. Yeah, thanks, Matt. Thanks. Thanks, Matt. Speaker. Uh, thank you, Matt. Speaker. Now hit the other line and speaker again. Let's talk racing. How you doing, Al? Hey, I'm okay. I'm okay. So we got... Back, driving back to Charlotte. You're on your way back? I'm in Rocky now. All right. Uh, on a little bitty two-lane back road. <laughs> getting for good news. Now, I understand you had to stop and eat before you called us. I had what? You had to stop and eat. Oh yeah, I always have to stop and eat. <laughs> <laughs> but what what'd you have to eat? That barbecue. That's the only thing you eat in Rocky Mountain, barbecue. <laughs> that's so, the only place that's left. It's not certainly, certainly not the best place in town, but it's the only place. So. <laughs> it's not the best. Well, I got a barbecue fix. Well, I don't think I've ever had any bad barbecue. Oh, I've had bad barbecue. Have you? Oh, yes. <laughs> So tell us what you what what you find out was happening today down in Charlotte. Well, I mean, it was, everything that happened was exactly what we thought. Um, Richard Childress was there. He announced that the three car would come back to Cup next year with Austin Dillon. Um, Dow Chemicals will sponsor the car. <clears throat> I think for sixteen races. Uh, Cheerios will have it for. The other 20, or maybe 17 and 19. Anyway, something like that. It's uh, Dow Chemicals and, and Cheerios. And, um, you know, he's going to run for Rookie of the Year, of course. Gil Martin, who was a crew chief for Harvick, will be young Mr. Dillon's crew chief. And, you know, they, they're, talking, they're talking big. They're talking about winning races and being a chase team and all that good stuff. So, you know, it's like the same thing you hear these announcements all the time. Nothing nothing we weren't expecting. Um, the only thing that was even remotely interesting was that uh, Richard mentioned that uh, when the two brothers, when, when Ty Dillon and Austin decided they wanted to start racing cars, they asked Grandpa for help. And Grandpa asked who wanted what number, and Ty Dillon, the younger, got the first choice, and he wanted number two. He wanted his father, Mike Dillon's number, and Austin said, I'll take three. And Richard apparently said, well, you know now that that's Dale Earnhardt's famous number. He comes with a lot of pressure, and apparently Austin Dillon said, no, that's not his number. Grandpa, that's your number. So that's that's how the Dillon boys got the, the car numbers they got. And um, uh, Ty will drive number three in Nationwide, and Austin will drive number three on time in Cup. So do you think, is it kind of funny that one of them would want uh, Mike Dillon's number compared to the three? Well, I, I don't know whether Ty Dillon, the younger of the two brothers, Ty may not have, I don't know, being somewhat younger, Ty may not have realized the significance of number three, and he mm. wanted his father's number. Right. Remember, he saw his father drive a whole lot, so he, he wanted he wanted his father's number, and Austin wanted his grandfather's number, and neither one of them wanted Dale Earnhardt's number. <laughs> I mean, you know, actually, they both got they both got Dale Earnhardt's number because so Earnhardt's first championship was in car number two, right? And then the other six were in car number three. So both boys got what they wanted, and without realizing it, they they also both got Big Dale's Big Dale's number. Mm -hmm. So apparently, Dale Jr., Kelly Earnhardt both signed off and. Gave it their blessing. There was no mention of Teresa. Um, yeah, I noticed that. Yeah, Richard Childress said he would not feel a full-time truck series team this year. Uh, he's getting out of the truck racing business, but he will have three full-time nationwide cars for uh, Brian Scott and Brendan Gaughan and Ty Dillon. So that's all there was. It took about 45 minutes. 
took a lot of pictures. <coughs> uh, everybody said all the right things, and that's, I guess, the three is back. Childress said that he, he knew, and Richard was real honest about this. Richard said, I realize that you can't please everybody, and there are going to be some long-time, old-time R&R fans who aren't going to like it. And he said, but I always said that when the number comes back, and he said when, not if, he said when the number comes back, it will only come back with a member of the Earnhardt family or the Childress family. And he said, since I don't have any racing kids, grandsons are close enough. So, uh, but he, he said he's had the number, um, you know, since Earnhardt died. He's paid to keep that number. Uh, nobody, he said that NASCAR never never put any pressure on him to to use the number. Uh, although he said, Bill Francis told me one day, if, if a team owner comes to us and wants that number, you're going to have to do something with it or you might lose it. But he said nobody ever did. No, nobody ever, no other team owner ever came and said, we want number three. So <clears throat> the children's had it all this time and finally decided that now was the time to, to bring it out. Yeah, I, th I think it's a good thing. I think Austin's a, a good kid, uh, and I think he'll do a good job with the three. And I'm kind of glad to get it back onto the racetrack. Uh, I think for some people, the notion to think that it should never come back, uh, I, I don't agree with. Well, you know, it's like Richard said today. He said, <clears throat> um, he said, for every, <clears throat> excuse me, he said, for every five phone calls I get, or for every five calls we get, I'm sure me that RCR saying don't do it. We get 95 saying do it. Um, and he admitted something today that a lot of us kind of suspected all along. Uh, he said last January, a year ago, a year ago coming up, he sort of let it trickle out. He planted the story that that he was considering bringing the car back. For, for next year, for, for um, 14. And he said, I just wanted to get a feel within the media and within the race community what the reaction would be. And he said, As the first thing that story kind of leaked out, um, it was about 85% positive. The second day and the third day the story was out there, it got to be 90% positive mm -hmm. and he said that he said to me that was a sign that we needed to to go ahead and do it um he, he really brought the boys up if you look at it if you look at the record each of his grandsons has spent two years in a lower division before moving up whether they won championships whether they won rookie of the year or whatever each of them spent two years before they moved to the next level. So Austin spent two years in, nation, in uh, truck, two, two years in Nationwide is moving up. And, Ty, and now Ty has spent two years in trucks and two years in Nationwide, I'm sorry, two years in trucks. And next year will be the first of his two years in, in Nationwide. And you gotta figure by 2016, both the Dillon boys will be in Cup, and um, I suspect either Brian, either uh, Paul Menard will be gone, or Richard will have a four team. But I suspect that Ty Dillon will be in Cup by sixteen. Yeah, I would probably suspect the same thing. I did hear him say that if he could find sponsorship for Jeffrey Earnhardt, that he would put him in a truck next yeah. this year, or this coming year. Yeah. But he also said he had sold, he said, we've sold most of our truck stuff to, I think it's Sharp Gallagher Racing, um, or Gallagher Sharp maybe. Anyway, he said, we've sold most of our truck stuff, and we're no longer in the truck racing business. Um, but yeah, he said if Jeffrey could, if he could get, if something came along, he'd love to give 
give Jeffrey a ride, then obviously there would be, that would be the number three truck. Because right now, I think he's, I think Richard will keep the three number for the truck series, even though he's not going to use it. Just keep it. And, um, and Ty will be a number three nationwide. So he, he's keeping that number close to home. Yeah, I kind of got the same senses. I would like somebody to give Jeffrey a, a decent uh, opportunity to, to do something. Well, you know, just because you got a name, I mean, you can drive. Okay. As, as we have That's seen, true. you know, any number of times. Oh well, yeah, I, I, absolutely. I mean, we see that. Right. Yeah. I, I did mention. I did mention to Bill Martin, the crew chief. I said, you know, your driver today automatically became the second most popular driver in Cup. And he kind of grinned. He said, Yeah. He said, Junior can probably stay number one for all for all time. But he said, uh, bringing this three back will really, it, it'll make an impact. Yeah. So. Well, I think it's big for the sponsors. I mean, to come back on the three car with Austin Dillon, I mean, I think you're going to get, you know, hopefully the return on investment quite big compared to what they're spending. I mean, I don't know what they're spending. but I mean, it's, it's going to be a nice big package that's going to come to them anyway, just because the number three with it's got so many fans already with the car. They're going to have sponsors ready to pop right out and throw a check right at him. Yeah. I mean, Wouldn't I'm, that be nice? Richard, yeah. Richard is very concerned, or he is very uh, cognizant and very aware that this is going to be a very delicate subject for a lot of fans for a while. It's going to be, you know, you got to really handle this thing right. you got to be classy about it. You can't do anything to even remotely suggest that Austin Dillon is replacing Dale Earnhardt. You can't, I mean, you can't, you can't even get that area code of comparison um, because he's not. He's simply taking the number that Richard Childress had. I mean, Richard Childress ran that number for years before Earnhardt ever came along. Correct, yeah. Um, I mean, Richard drove it himself. Uh, Ray Fox and Ray, the, the Ray Fox team had it for a long time. Ricky Rudd had it. Uh, in fact, Ricky Rudd gave Childers his first two career cup wins as a driver. So, but Earnhardt obviously, and, and Ty is aware of that. Ty said, I'm very much aware. I, I realize who made this number famous. I realize who did all the, the great things with it. And he said, we're going to we're going to bring it back in a very classy manner. We're going to work hard and do all we can to give the old-time Earnhardt fans a reason to come back. Yeah. Uh, and, and I'm sure a lot of them left the. I'm sure when he got killed, a lot of them left the sport, or they moved over to junior, and now they've got to decide whether they want to stay with junior or come back to, to RCR. Now, do you think Austin can make the three more popular than it already is? And are you surprised by how passionate fans, some, some fans don't think the three should be run again? Well, I mean, yes, yeah, some fans probably don't think the, the 43 should be run. Some fans don't think the 11 should be run. So a lot of fans don't think anybody should wear number seven in baseball because they love Mickey Mantle. Um, and, you know, you've got, you've got a number of fans in any sport, I mean, there are fans who don't think anybody should wear 24 because that was Michael uh, Michael Jordan's number. So, you know, you get, you get fans like that. It doesn't surprise me a bit because they were so passionate. Earnhardt, Earnhardt Children's fans were so absolutely passionate and they were so devastated by what happened. I, I can see a lot of them just turned their back on the sport, walked away from it, the things that have been happening the last five or six or seven years probably pushed it even, even further away from it. The chase, a lot of folks don't like the chase. They don't like the lucky dog. There's so many things that a lot of old fans don't like. This might bring some of them back, but it, I, I don't believe that Austin will ever make it as famous as the Big Dale ever did. I, that's 
that'll never happen. Yeah, well, I, I agree with that, but I think he'll bring in a new, some old fans, and I think he'll bring some new fans, uh, you know, to the table, being a young guy and having some type of connection with the three, being in the family. And like you said, it, it wasn't Dale's prior to that. It was Richard's number. Uh so yeah, yeah, I think it's going to be a good thing. I'm glad to see it come back myself. Um, I don't think a number should be retired. I think we should celebrate everybody. And obviously, he's not going to trying to compare anybody to Dale Seniors. That's is it? Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's impossible. You know, it's interesting that that number doesn't really belong to Childress. Well, it belongs to NASCAR, right? Right. NASCAR owns the numbers, and by whatever tradition. They have come along. They they basically sell the number each year, and like I said earlier, Childress kept paying to have that number, even though he had no intention of bringing it back until he felt the time. You know, the time was right, the driver was right, um, everything fell in place. So it's really you know numbers are given back. Where numbers are leased on an annual basis, you don't you don't automatically get your number back again. You have to ask for it, and in almost every case, you get it. So, mm. now did you go to to the practice at Charlotte today? That's where this thing was held. Yeah, that's where that's where the announcement came. Oh, okay. It wasn't at Childress's. It, it was no. It was supposed to be at Childress's, but when the um, Testing got rained out on Monday and moved to today. They, the children's people realized, well, you know, Austin's got to be here testing, and the media can all be at the test. Why don't we move our announcement to the test? So the announcement was made at the Speedway today at noontime and uh, during lunch hour, basically. So the the teams tested, I think, ten to twelve. And then one to five, and they ran the media out at three o'clock. So, well, what all was done, and what all was learned, and what all they worked on, we don't know because they made us leave. <laughs> they were going to have a, they were going to have a big debrief at the end of the day, have all the drivers and crew chiefs come into the media center, I guess, and sit down and kind of go over what what they had been through all day. So. But yes, they had about 30 cars. They ran five or six different configurations of, of spoiler height, wicker, front nose. I mean, they just, they had, they did everything. Uh, trying to get, and really what they were trying to do, they were trying to find out where they could find a way to create more competition among the cars back in the pack because the leader obviously was clean air doesn't need the help right everybody behind him needs help so they were really working on things to help cars in traffic um and, and they worked again they worked on spoilers and ride height and springs and shining did and nascar told him okay this this run this next 30 lap run this is what we want on the cars. And after that run, he said, okay, we want these other things on the cars. Take, this, take what you just had off, put, what you put, put new stuff on, and let's see what we got. So it was just kind of a, almost like a um, run, run what you run, and then we'll tell you whether we like it, and uh, then run something else. Roger wants to know if they had crate engines that would save a lot of money. I have no idea. <laughs> everybody, give my, give everybody I a would, crate engine. I would doubt it. Tell go at it. I would doubt it very seriously. I would doubt that Rick Hendrick or Art Harkin SC Racing Motors or Ralph Spinway would would uh, well unless they built them, of course. But no, I think I think crate motors for cups the thing. You, you don't don't look for that anytime soon. Yeah, I, I wouldn't think so. But anywho. All right, now we're going to go ahead and let you go because we're going to go eat in a little while. <laughs> well, have a good time without me. Hey, I, I got something for you to look up when you get home. 
take and check out the show we did right after the Richmond race last year. This, this past year or? In 2012. Okay, why? We, it, it was, I just happened to be listening to it last night and we were actually talking about what the drivers were doing to let certain other drivers get further ahead in points to make it in the chase. One of them being Tony Stewart and Ryan Newman. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. All right, boys. I'll see you all next Wednesday. All right. Be all right. safe. Thanks, all. All right. It's a bigger button now, is it? Yeah, it was interesting. We were talking about, on the show, about how Tony had backed off to let Ryan finish in front of him. I think he actually won the race, and it got him into the chase. <laughs> And that was last year, the Richmond stuff, and nobody even so thought to bring that up from this year what had happened last year. And they let well, him I don't think anybody wanted to argue about anything. That's what's whip down everybody. Yeah. But you know, the, the funny part of that, I was talking to um, Curtis, uh, Clint Warrior's coach driver at, at Martinsville, and I, and I says, you know, I said, dude, I don't blame you for what you did. Everybody in racing would have done the same thing or has done the same thing. And he was like, man, I'm so glad. You're like one of the only people said that everybody's like crucifying us for that. Now, you know, people outside of the sport are just watching. Right, yeah. Has that perception. But anybody in the sport, you do whatever you, I mean, whatever. I always still remember when Harvick was there and he was in the chase. And, and the other two guys, which was Clint and, and uh, Burton, were kind of on the borderline of maybe falling out or whatever, and they asked him in the meeting before the race, and he says, I'll do whatever i got to do. And they were like, well, what if you're leading the race? He said, well, I'll slow down. You know, I, I think if they'd have just owned it to begin with, it yeah. would have been different. But I mean, anybody that's actually been a race driver knows this stuff goes on one way, shape, form, or another, whether it's taking somebody out purposely. I mean... I hate well, to use Kyle Petty was a, was a prime example. I forget what race he was saying one time on on race day or something. He's like, you know, the king was down seven laps. You know how many times I spun out in that race? Seven <laughs> times. <laughs> you know who won? The king. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's like Earnhardt and uh, uh, Terry Labonte. Remember in Bristol? Bristol. Bristol. Mm -hmm. That's always a big one everybody yeah. throws out there. You know, hey, that's, that's the wrestling. Saturday night racing that everybody loves to see. Yeah. But because this sport is so expensive at the cup level, you will hardly see it anymore. Unless, so of course, somebody pisses somebody else off accidentally and then they want to pay, pay them back. Well, it's like some people just want to be a little too politically correct. I like to ha let the boys have at it. Exactly. You, you, you race up until you get to the, the spring cup level and then you ride. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, that's the thing. That's I, like playing I, football until you get to the pro level and then you just right. get the big checks. <laughs> that's it. I mean, that, that's the thing I, I admire about Kyle Busch and, and Kurt, uh, Tony Stewart, Harvick, because those guys will do, they don't care. I mean, it, it doesn't bother them that they tear a car up as long as they bring the win back. Yeah. And there's something to say about that. Yeah. I mean, that's how passionate they are. Now, did, did you check out the Snowball Derby this year? Eric, Eric Jones won. Yep. Yeah. After, yeah. After, after, after Chase yeah. Elliott got DQ'd. And, and they, they specified, they said, hey, in the rule book, it is in bold letters. No tungsten. Yeah, but it's and, like bold letters and different in a different color. I'm sure it was a, probably just a mistake. Well, we just overlooked it. I mean. Or didn't think they would ever check it, I'm sure. Well. Of course, somebody saw it and they probably said, hey, you need to check the car for... Well, if I ran second, I'd certainly... Oh, <laughs> hell yes! Yeah. That's an advantage. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. you had too I mean, much that didn't cause camber in the rear the race, tires or... But it certainly, you know, I'm sure it probably helped tire wear or, or something along those lines, but... Because well, you can put the lead where you want it or all the weight where you want it. Yeah, the, that's the thing about tungsten being so small, you can be more exact with where you mm -hmm. put it at. Mm -hmm. I mean, just think all the lead rails that we used to have in late models that you had to fill them suckers up on the left side to give well, you left side weight. Tyler's probably got a lot of lead in his car, but I don't have much in mine. <laughs> <laughs> we're keep, somebody's right. too fat. They keep telling me they're going to put me on the biggest loser. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. I think I got, I got one five-pound piece in it. <laughs> oh, gosh. We took ten pounds out of his this year. <laughs> yeah, I think the scales were a little fat because I think everybody... Uh, uh, I know a few people that took like mm -hmm. 20 pounds out of their car. Oh, let's see. That's what's good about ring racing. It's kind of like old short track racing in NASCAR years ago. 
Now, now at Charlotte today, they had a little mini race, a 30 lap configuration race, they yeah. called it. Kevin Harvick won that. Didn't win anything. But no, there's no <laughs> points or anything. It's just a pride type thing. Uh, he's driving the number four car now. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the first time test with, uh, with the new team. Yep. Kurt Busch is running the 41 car. Mm -hmm. Now, the four used to be 39. Correct. 41 is the only new number that they have, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I noticed they had Austin was in the 29. Yep, because <laughs> it will be three next year. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, let's see. Who else? There's a lot of switching around, too. Yeah, they had Regan Smith in for Jeff Gordon, I've seen. Uh, Jeffrey Earnhardt was out in the Go Green Racing Ford. That was strange. I didn't expect that. I didn't, wouldn't expect them to be there. Well, that's, that okay. team has got like a couple of pe different well, I didn't know Go Green involved. had any the cup cars. All I know was that they had yeah, uh, nationwide the, cars. No, they've had a cup car for a while. They've kind of started to part some. They've got okay. that sponsor. Um, it's a military thing. They were on the 52. And the, well, when and Brian was driving it? See, that's that whole 52 that they that Brian and, and you got you old know, 52 Kelly Owen and 52 was thing. involved in. And I know Kelly, uh, but Kelly got is kind of involved with, uh, uh, I can't think of the guy's name that owns the Go Green. So they've kind of been combining some um, resources. Uh, Philip St. Hilaire. No. Mm, no Pat, not Archie St. Hilaire. Yeah, Archie, yeah. Um, so him and Archie kind of, I think, put some together, some stuff together. Um, which uh, It's a foundation that the sponsor is on the car, because it was originally on the 52. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that's the one they ran at Daytona. I don't think it was, because that was a white car, because this is like a, a camo car. And then later in the year, they, they kind of combined some resources and moved it to the 79. I think mostly because they had a lot more points, because they've started part the year before. Yeah. Apparently on in uh, Stenhouse's team, they're going to almost do a complete makeover for the whole thing. Yeah, I don't, well, I think this crew, this crew chief is still going to be the the guy they're switching over from uh, from his nationwide car. Let's see, you're going to have uh, former crew chief Mike Kelly is going to replace Scott Graves, uh, mm -hmm. car chief Pierre Kiltel, Mike Bergerwitz, and Brent Wentz and Joey Elliott. Uh, those guys have left. And he's going to have uh, Patrick McGee and a couple other guys are going to be coming on the team. Yeah, so, I don't know if that's guys from his nationwide <laughs> ride when he when he did well. Now Finch is going to start car for Daytona. He says he's guaranteed spot, so it's got to be somebody with a championship. So yeah. it's probably going. I would. I don't know if it's going to be Terry or because I think Terry said he didn't want to come back anymore. I, I thought. From, uh, Put Dale Jarrett in it. What the heck? Yeah. Well, you know, I didn't think about him, but I figured it was going to be uh, Elliot. You also Bill got Elliot because you mean got Ricky Rudd also. It's not a guaranteed spot. Oh. He said he's guaranteed a spot. Well, no. What was, the, the, what was the points will, of the fifty-one? How many points do they have from last year? It's not guaranteed. Well, the past champions provisional is the only guaranteed spot. Another new rule. Another new rule. Jesus. Well, they've always had the championship or the, well, the past well, they, champion, so it's got to be a past champion of who he's going to put in the car. But who is it? I, I don't know. That's why I kind of figured it would be Bill Elliott, being he's kind of got a tie with uh, Hendrick Motorsports, and and he's over there. Yeah. Is Vickers coming back this year? He's supposed to be. He's supposed to be healthy by a Daytona run around. Yeah, yeah Vickers. It's going to be in the fifty-five. Good. Uh, it's supposed to be for a full-time ride as long as he's. Healthy. Healthy. Yeah, and his is not that he can't really drive or he's not able to. It's just if he gets in a bad wreck yeah, that he would, uh, you know, bleed. Yeah, the 66 car, which was the 56, Waltrip's going to run Daytona. Burton's going to run Vegas in that. Maybe some other races. Yeah, they got guaranteed, I think, six or seven races. But he's supposed yeah. to be doing a bunch of testing for them. Now, I got a question. What do you think about Tracer? Well, I like him. Yeah. What do you think going to happen? Or the team over there? Yeah. I think it's going to be interesting. I mean, I, I like the idea. I think you got, you know, we always keep leaving Danica out, but uh, I mean, you got Kurt Busch. I mean, you got a ton of talent over there. You talk about Kurt Busch, yeah. Tony Stewart, and Kevin Harvick, and they all have these big personalities. But, you know, I mean, I don't think people will sort of forget that, that Kurt is in the 78 car, which is it's pretty much a children's car. Right. They sit in on team meetings. They share information. So Kevin and Kurt are probably already have, 
you know, a friendship or some type of relationship to, to work with, I think it's going to be a good thing, honestly. I mean, I know some people think the wheels could fall off. I think they got a lot going on over there trying to build a new shop and mm -hmm. to fit all the cars and house them in there. But I think it's going to, I think they're going to be well. I mean, Tony's not going to sit around and just run no. the way they've run. I mean, how long do you think until he gets back into it? For Tony? Yeah. What do you mean? Tony coming back to racing. He's, he's supposed he's, to be ready at Daytona. Is really? He's, mm -hmm. He should be ready for Daytona. Yeah, I mean, it's, I think it's going to be somewhat close. I don't think he can do any testing or something because I know his leg's still bothering him. But yeah. uh, no, he's supposed to be ready to Cl go to Daytona. Closer he gets, I'll call some of his guys on the team and find out. Cool. Did y'all see his little cart he had riding around in all the tracks? Yeah. 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 I've seen, him. Yeah, I seen him in Richmond. People were coming over taking pictures of him and he didn't move. Yeah. He, he, said, he said he felt so bad that that was how he had to maneuver around yeah. and everything. Cause he's, yeah, his leg looked rough. It was a bad wreck. Yeah. Bad, bad. I mean, that, he demolished it. Yeah. I mean, that's what, you know, I don't know my wife were worried about him because I ran one of those wing champs over at Langley this, this summer. And, you know, those things can be pretty damn. I mean, we're running about 70 miles an hour on those things, and there ain't, there's not much of a roll cage. Well, at least the sprint cars got something good. Any yeah. more questions you got for our young man before we uh, kick him when out? You gonna be, when's, you gonna be, when's your first wreck, win going to be? The first win. Uh, Are you going to sandbag into the B man? I'm, I'm hoping it'll be. Fourth, and come up in one of the mains. <laughs> I don't know about top dog. Top dog's a little different. Uh, the A main's pretty tough too. Yeah, yeah A main's a little. It's out there. You could probably do it in the B main. Scott come he's fast every race. He's been doing it long enough. You think he'd move on to something else? Yeah. Money. Yeah. Yeah. Money. yeah. Yeah. He's got a good gig. New Papa John's car. Yep. Uh, yeah, he, he was on. When you on drive Facebook. for the owners. He, he, Anybody want to follow you? How are they going to find you? Uh, I know Twitter. Um, is it Tyler Daniels 45? And then Facebook is just Tyler Daniels. That's about it, I guess. Tyler Daniels, race car driver. <laughs> That's <laughs> Tyler Daniels, racing driver. You got any girls to say tell you to call them? Call you? Not at the moment. Not at the moment. Not at the moment. Not at the moment. Do you got a girlfriend or are you free? Yeah. Or are you into guys? I mean, I'm, I'm not right, No, 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 no. We won't go there. We won't go there. But. You want to start his new year out? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah okay. You know, I got to pick on everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Well, hopefully everybody enjoyed the show tonight. Uh, got Tyler out here. To, yeah, it was cool. Thanks for coming. Yeah, thanks, man. Always nice to have some, yeah. some of the young kids yeah, coming up. Next week we're going to pick on uh, Cameron. Testament. Uh, you got any jokes on him? We can pick on him. No, I mean actually, I heard he did really good down in Georgia for one of the carts. Yeah, I think he does pretty well in the carts. Yeah, he won, it uh, looks he like won a bunch of money down there. Yeah, he, he, does that he won two. I got to get some dirt on him. Saying, I told him I'm gonna pick on him. I find something. He's a good kid. Yeah, he's he like a good kid. All right, everybody. We'll see you next week and be safe this week while all the Christmas crazy people out there are shopping. Crazy people. You got that right. <laughs> see ya. Hey guys, I'm Daytona 500 winner Trevor Bain, and thank you for watching Let's Talk Races. Hi, I'm Robert Richardson Jr., driver of the number 23 Dodge Challenger for R3 Motorsports in the NASCAR Nationwide Series, and you're watching Let's Talk Racing. I'm Timothy Peter, driver of the number 17 Toyota in the NASCAR Camp World Truck Series, and you're listening to Let's Talk Racing. driver of the 33 NASCAR late model 2011 Old Dominion Speedway track champion thank you for watching Let's Talk Racing TV Hi, I'm Sam Hunt, driver of the 42 car I want to thank Let's Talk Racing Hi my name is Natalie Sather I drive the 94 K&N Lady Eagle Safety Wear Butler Built Seats Bell Helmets Hooker Harness Seat Belts Number 94 at South Boston Speedway Be sure to listen to Let's Talk Racing